Therapist reacts. Uh, there's a BuzzFeed article that I just read about parents who regret having children. They're making anonymous confessions online, and it's taboo but important. That's the that's the full title of the article. And boy, do I relate to this one. Not that I regret having children, but I don't regret with a capital R. I sometimes regret with a lowercase r, right? If you look at it day in day out, I'm so glad that I'm a, that I'm a father. I'm so glad that I have kids. But if you go into the in, in the macro, like on the whole big picture, but on the little picture, the smaller moments, sometimes it's exhausting. And sometimes it's infuriating, and sometimes it feels hopeless. And I could totally relate to these parents. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the top seven uh, highest voted comments on this Reddit thread and I'm going to address these parents who regret having children. Or if it's not that strong, but you love your kids and you love being a parent, but man, sometimes it just burns you out. I'm going to give my pointers for how to cope, how to deal, how to make the best of, of your situation, best of your life, best of uh, your family, and to actually enjoy parenting again. Uh, the first one, I love my kids. And I'm told I'm a pretty good dad, and sometimes I enjoy it, but most of the time it's just draining. I understand that there are people out there who enjoy spending time with kids, just like there are people who enjoy talking to strangers, and suffice it to say, I'm just not one of them. So, Alicia, if you follow Mended Light, you've seen Alicia. Alicia became a mother because of a spiritual experience, an experience with God. Right, where she felt called to be a mother. But as far as what she wants to do, as far as what she gets joy from, it's career, it's profession, it's research and study and learning and making a difference in the world and, and using her talents and advancing and progressing and setting goals and achieving those goals. And kids get in the way of all of that. <laughs> kids, I mean, literally, it's like the train track is broken, right? And then the train just gets derailed. And so she especially can relate to this one. I can relate to this one in the sense of I love being a dad, but I didn't know that I had an angry side until I was a father. And I didn't know I had, I didn't know I could feel so helpless or so hopeless or so inadequate until I was a father. The, the advice that I would give this person who wrote this is it's okay to be real with yourself. There's different types of parenting experiences and just because you don't like kids per se doesn't mean you can't love your kids. We love who we serve, we love who we sacrifice for when we invest time and energy into people we find our love for them. And that is no more true than in the case of parenting. Next one. I have custody of my brother's kids. I don't want them. I already have one of my own. My brother's kids are not as well behaved as my children. It is very frustrating. I love them. I will protect them and take care of them. I find myself very upset by the fact that I just can't seem to love them as much as my children. It's depressing and I hate myself that I because I feel this way. I try so hard not to let my nieces and nephews see that I struggle with this, but kids are smart and I know they pick up on it. Oftentimes the behavior precedes the emotion, right? We show love. It's, that's not fake it till you make it. It's love is an ability. It's not just a feeling. And sometimes we show love for people even if we're not necessarily feeling in the moment because we know it's there at the bedrock. We know it's there at the core level. Showing love to these kids will help the feeling of love for, to return, but it may take a long time. And it's not a competition. It is completely 100% okay for you to feel more natural loving feelings towards your biological children than towards any children in your care. If you're watching this at home, maybe you have stepkids or you're part of a blended family or you've adopted or you're fostering. Feelings don't just come naturally. An old friend of mine once said, you can't force matters of the heart. And that's not just in dating, that's also in parenting. So allow yourself to be okay with whatever you're feeling at the moment. Remember, you are choosing to give and to sacrifice. You are choosing to love and to serve and to raise. You are choosing to be there for these people, these kids. That is incredible. That is love. And the fact that sometimes you don't like them <laughs> because they're not very likable or sometimes the fact that you feel more drawn to your biological children. There's no shame in that. Just like there's no shame in you feel drawn to certain people to be your friends more than others or you're more close to one sibling over another. We can't control exactly what we're feeling all the time, but we can control how we show up for people. I have a son who I didn't want. His mother treated me terribly when we were together and we, were only, and we only found out she was pregnant after we separated. Being able to finally escape an abusive relationship only to be pulled back in with pregnancy was devastating. That being said, my son and I have an incredible bond and while my relationship with his mom never recovered, I'm glad she made the decision to keep him against my wishes. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard when a child reminds you of a parent who you no longer love or a parent who hurt you. 
what you could see in their eyes or in their facial structure and their mannerisms or, their, or in their behaviors especially. It is very, very natural to project involuntarily feelings from the one to the other. It's vital to remind yourself day in, day out, I am dealing with the person in front of me and they are not responsible for the behavior of the other. I don't like being a mom. I'm a single mom and they are with me always. I never get a break. One adult, three kids. I'm tired. I'm counting the days until they are all moved out and gone. I constantly imagine how great my life would be without them. And then I feel like a horrible person because who thinks like that? I'm such a good mom to them too. No one would ever guess I think like that. I'm a fake. You're probably not a fake. We take door number one. We take door number two. We take door number three. It's natural to wonder what the other doors might have held for us. That's true in our romantic partnerships, that's true in our friendships, that's true in our careers, that's true with parenting. But be careful about fantasizing the grass is always greener. My life will be better when I don't have kids. Odds are, these challenges will just be replaced with these challenges. These struggles will just be replaced with these struggles. These struggles will just be replaced with these joys, right? It'll just all be new stuff. There is no, my life is so great now, there's, we love, we live, we strive, we struggle, we experience joys and successes, we experience blows and crushing, de crushing defeats, and we live. And, but that's okay. It's okay that, yeah, when your kids are grown, you will have a different life. And there are things you will get to do now that you didn't get to do then. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad person about that. Most of these that I'm reading is people feeling crushed by societal expectations of what it means to be a parent and not giving themselves permission to just be, to just feel, to just experience, to just fantasize, to... It's okay. Are you showing up for these kids? Are you loving them? Are you supporting them? Are you raising them? Are you providing for their needs? Are you showing them love? If the answer is yes, you're a good parent. Even if sometimes you don't feel it here or here. I love my kids. I would die for them. But after having them, I realized I don't want, I don't want to have any kids. I can't seem to enjoy them. I'm too serious with them. I think it's because I have to I have to make sure they grow up to be good people. I'm responsible for them. I wish I could enjoy them, but I have a hard time getting out of my seriousness. How your kids turn out isn't entirely on you. They are autonomous beings who will grow up to make their own choices. A lot of parents feel like how a kid turns out is a reflection on who they are as a parent. And while sometimes that's, there, I mean, there is truth to that, but it's not that black and white. Again, your kids are going to make their own choices. And if you're too serious about who they grow up to be, if you're too stressed about them being good, you'll forget to give them what they need that helps them to be good, which is acceptance, which is belonging, which is hope, which is self-esteem that comes from I'm good enough. Enjoy them. When you stress about making them just right, you're going to screw them up. <laughs> Not always, but but that that is how we often, like we, we screw kids up either by going too far into apathy or too far into rigid anxiety. Now, if you're hearing this and you're like, uh-oh, like don't panic, set it right. If you care enough to be involved, if you care enough to teach them and to give them consequences, that's enough. You teach them, you, you teach them the choices of consequences, you teach them morality, and then you just enjoy and love them. And they're going to make the choices they're going to make. I don't feel like a mom. I feel like a caregiver. I get little joy in taking care of my daughter and I'm constantly worn down. I'm exhausted. This pandemic has destroyed what little sanity I had left as I can't even get a small break because there is no school. Yeah, I think we all can relate to that a little bit. I mean, yeah, nap time, outside play time, right? COVID restrictions are lifting. And so time with friends, time outside, depending on your neighborhood, right? Uh, time reading, time listening to music. And then the biggest one is getting your kids to bed early so you have a couple hours for yourself before you go to bed. I know in some families that's easier said than done, and it's not that cut and dry, but for a lot of people, having the discipline to get them down and to keep them down will do wonders for your life. And if you don't feel like you're a caregiver, I mean, if you don't feel like a parent, you feel like a caregiver, indulge in play more often, not just for your child. Like sometimes we play with our kids half-heartedly because it's like, oh, okay, I need to do this or they are, so they'll leave me alone. But if you actually play with your kids, but you do it for you, you do it to enjoy the moment, you do it to laugh, you do it to get some exercise, you do it to, don't see it as just another checkoff, but as actual engagement, there's joy there that we can rediscover and rekindle. It set the tone for the rest of my life. One of those hindsight is 2020 things. I, honest, I honestly believe that if I never had a kid, particularly when I was as young and alone as I was in a very socially backward era, I'd have made a lot more of myself. Both of our lives could have been a lot better had I either wa waited to have her 
or let another couple adopt her like I wanted, but I was forced out of the choice. This person is trapped in what if. And yes, like I said, we do explore. I wonder what would have happened if I had gone through door number two, right? But there's a difference between meandering down that road once in a while and living in that space. You do have this child. You did choose this life. Whatever it might have been, focus on radical acceptance, which is I'm going to divert my energies to the things I have control over, the things I can directly influence. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to work on. That's where I have my biggest impact. So yes, it set the tone for your entire life. The good news is, even if it's not the life you would have chosen yourself, could you do it all over again? It's the life you have, and you can make the most of it. And as cheesy as, and as hallmark as that is, I legitimately believe that's true. Embracing what is instead of fretting over what isn't is a great way to find peace. Folks, it's not always full house moments. Parenting is hard. It is the hardest thing my wife and I have ever done. Like either of us as a couple, but also as individuals. It's the hardest thing we've ever done. There's joy there. We love who we serve. But being okay with, it's hard. Sometimes I don't want it anymore. Sometimes I feel disrespected, unappreciated. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed, sad, hopeless, a failure. Normalizing these things and not thinking. What I loved about this thread is, I mean, there's hundreds of these comments in this Reddit thread. You're not alone. This is a common experience. What people post on Instagram and Facebook of how happy their family is, is not necessarily a lie, but sometimes it is. Other times it's a moment in time. Look at these happy snapshots. Our family photos that make it on social media, there's a bunch of uh, rejected photos that I'm not allowed to post. <laughs> um, that Because it's real and it's hard. And it's okay to not love it all the time. It's even okay not to feel the emotion of affection and love towards your kids all the time. You show it and then you feel it. And sometimes it takes time. There's a lot more to say on the subject, but I hope this was helpful to someone today. If you are enjoying uh, this Therapist Reacts series, go ahead and uh, like, subscribe, click the bell so that you get notified every time Mended Light has a new video. And check out this playlist right here because uh, I've got a lot more of these. Thank you for joining me. And sound off in the comments below. How do you cope with being worn out from parenting or feeling like you made a mistake or that sometimes you don't want your kids? Can you relate to that on any level? We'd love to know how you work through it. I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, signing off.